Hi, I'm Dr. Mai Uchida, the director of the Massachusetts General Hospital Child Depression Program and assistant professor in psychiatry at Harbor Medical School. A few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to receive the Moderna coronavirus vaccine. I'm currently 37 weeks pregnant with our third boy, and when I received the vaccine, I was 34 weeks pregnant. My hospital posted this photo of me post-vaccination in their community engagement efforts to discuss vaccine safety. Since then, this photo has been shared by various institutions and programs, and I've gotten so many positive contacts from around the world asking me why did you choose to get the vaccine while you were pregnant? And you know what? I love this question because it's a question that I put so much thought and scientific reading into so that I can come to comfortable decisions that I did. Uh, so today I'm hoping to share my thought process with you. Just reminding everyone that there is no established clinical guidelines around COVID vaccines during pregnancy because pregnant women were not included in the clinical trials. So there's no one correct answer here, but this was my personal thought process that allowed me to confidently receive the shot and I'm super excited to share it with you. This is the notorious coronavirus. Around the coronavirus, there are these spikes that are intuitively called the spike proteins. The coronavirus needs these spike proteins to enter our lung cells. The spike protein attaches on these things called ACE2 receptors on the wall of our cells, and then our cell opens up and welcomes the virus into our cell. And the coronavirus is like, ah, don't mind if I do, I'm going to make myself comfortable and replicate myself. And they replicate, replicate, replicate. And before you know it, you've got tons of coronavirus kids in your lung cells. This is what getting infected with COVID looks like. So one of the main aims of the messenger RNA vaccines is to block the spike protein from attaching onto these ACE2 receptors so that the virus won't be welcome into our cells. The vaccine shot that I received was filled with mRNAs that coated the spike protein. What is a mRNA or a messenger RNA? The messenger RNA is a molecule that has instructions on how to make a spike protein. Once the mRNAs were injected into my arm, my left one in my case, ribosomes, which are the builders of our body, started reading the instructions and started building the spike proteins. The ribosomes only got the instructions on how to make the spike proteins, so they didn't make the coronavirus itself. It only made the spike proteins, which are harmless to our bodies. So they made these beautiful structures that you see here, and we're like, ta-da, I made a spike protein. Then my immune system detected the spike proteins as something that's not part of my body. And anything that is not part of my body, the immune system cleans it up. While cleaning up the spike proteins, my immune system organized itself in creating a way to get rid of this thing a little more efficiently next time if it were to come into my system once again. And they created these Y-shaped things called antibodies that will detect the spike proteins quickly and will activate my immune system um, in terms of getting rid of them. Now, after this, if a coronavirus were to come into my nostrils and mouth and then into my body, these antibodies are going to recognize the spike proteins right away. They say, hey, I know this guy. It's the spike protein that we got rid of the other day. Uh, this is not something that we want in our body. Got to get rid of these guys. Let's attach and attack. The antibodies start attaching onto these spike proteins one after another. Then what happens next is, as you can see in the super cute Japanese graphic that I use because I'm a huge Japanese graphic novels fan, um, because the antibodies are attached to the spike proteins, the spike proteins cannot attach onto the ACE2 receptor that is necessary for it to uh, get into the cells. So in turn, the coronavirus cannot enter our cells. Then um, another thing that happens here is um, that these antibodies just keep on attaching to the spike proteins at one after another, and a bunch of them surround the coronavirus because of that. They alert the immune system, telling them this is not supposed to be here, please clean it up, and cause uh, something called the macrophages, uh, which are cleaners of our body. 
And the macrophages eat this thing up, destroy. That's what they do. Uh, the antibodies also cause the killer T cells that has like a really cool name. They're literally killers. And the killer T cells come and also destroys the coronavirus. This is how the mRNA vaccines work, and I think it's really cool. Now, what happens to the mRNA and spike proteins after the shot? So I bet that you've heard that both the Pfizer-BioNTech and Moderna vaccines need super cold temperatures to be stored. Uh, that's because these messenger RNAs are so frail and fragile that they cannot hold their structures uh, without that kind of temperature. So once they're injected into us where our body temperature is nowhere near that cold, they disintegrate on their own very quickly and basically disappear. Um, the spike proteins uh, also get broken down fairly quickly. So after the immune response is built, these guys don't stick around at all. Uh, they're gone. And the only things that are left behind are the antibodies that we want to stay with us. Um, in context of pregnancy, like for me, uh, the mRNA is so frail and fragile that it's uh, estimated not to even reach the placenta. Even if they did, they will disintegrate there. Um, now the antibodies, they might cross the placenta and get passed on to my baby. If this happens, this is actually great because um, this means that the baby will be equipped to protect himself from coronavirus as he is born. This mechanism is something that is um, commonly used in the current OB practice. Uh, we're recommended to get the flu shot and uh, the Tdap vaccine while we're pregnant, and I got them too. Um, that is with the hope to protect ourselves from um, the infections, but um, also uh, for the mother to develop antibodies to these infectious beings and pass the antibodies down onto our babies uh, so that they will be protected from them as well as they were born. Um, same thing with breastfeeding. Uh, one of the benefits of breastfeeding is that the antibodies made by uh, the moms would go into the breast milk and protect the baby. I have to confess that I am a huge molecular biology geek. Uh, when I was in elementary school, my dad, who is actually a molecular biologist, uh, read this book to me called The River Out of Eden which introduced so many cool concepts and meanings of genes, uh, DNAs, and ever since then my hobbies have been figure skating, skiing, visual art, and molecular biology. So for someone like me who's followed this incredible progress of molecular biology, biochemistry, and synthetic biology over the past few decades, it's just so really moving that the decades of science in this field is now actualizing as a messenger RNA vaccine that could stop this global pandemic. For those who were surprised how quickly these vaccines have developed uh, since the start of the pandemic, I want to let you know that it's because of the decades of science that this became possible. And it's Oh my God, it's incredible. Uh, thank you to all the scientists who have worked in this field for, for, for all this time. Now let's review the clinical trial data of these vaccines. Here I'm going to introduce the uh, Pfizer-BioNTech data, but the Moderna vaccine data is very similar to this as well. So more than 43,000 people were randomized into the two groups on getting the vaccine group and not getting the vaccine group. They did not know which group they were in. The blue line here represents the number of, um, of people who eventually presented with COVID symptoms who did not get the vaccine. And the red line represents the number of people who came down with the COVID symptoms who did get the vaccine. I'm sure you can see the clear difference between these two lines. A lot of people who didn't receive the vaccine developed COVID symptoms, and the people who got the vaccine rarely developed symptoms of COVID. Basically, this vaccine works really well in preventing us from developing COVID symptoms. Another thing they saw is that even if you were to get COVID, the vaccine prevents your symptoms from getting too bad. In terms of safety, only less than 2% of those who got the vaccine reported severe adverse events. And most side effects that people experienced after getting the vaccine were things like fatigue, headaches, and fever that were all manageable. I know that the anaphylactic reactions have been in the news. Uh, 
Um, but among the more than 68.1 million shots that have been given um, already in the world as of January 25th, 2021, uh, anaphylactic reactions have only been reported in 2.2 cases per 1 million shots for the Moderna vaccine and 11.1 cases per 1 million the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine. I truly feel badly for those who had experienced this and I'm glad that all of them were managed and treated appropriately following their allergic reactions and I'm also glad that the occurrence rate of these events have been 0.000006%. Um, for me as a pregnant mom, even though there are no specific clinical trials that have been done uh, with pregnant women, these very high efficacy data on prevention of COVID and um, the safety that was established uh, in non-pregnant adults uh, were things that I could not ignore. Now let me talk about the risks of COVID, specifically in pregnancy. Pregnant women like me have a much higher risk of severe illness associated with COVID compared to others who are not pregnant. Pregnant women need three to five times more ICU admissions and mechanical ventilations compared to non-pregnant adults. Uh, we have increased rate of deaths associated with COVID as well, and preterm births were observed more in COVID-positive moms compared to uh, moms who did not have COVID. So if by me deciding not to vaccinate myself, it means that I would have to face these risks associated with COVID specifically in pregnancy. Say even if I didn't need a, uh, ICU admissions or mechanical ventilations, these are the usual symptoms of COVID. Uh, many of my healthy friends my age who have gotten COVID say that they experienced high fever and breathing difficulties that sustained for weeks. Um, I'm worried what that would mean for my baby who's in my body if I were to have sustained high fever and breathing difficulties. I was determined to do everything to prevent myself from experiencing this for myself and for my baby. Uh, so I masked, physically distanced, and washed my hands, and I got the vaccine. Because looking at the COVID rates in the U.S., to me, this was far more worrisome than any of the unknown associated with the mRNA vaccine. In closing, what I want to communicate here is that there's always a risk of doing something, but there's also a risk of not doing something. And the risk of not doing something, in this case, not receiving the vaccine is not zero. For me, the risk of not getting vaccinated was way scarier and the benefits of getting the vaccine far outweigh the risks. Uh, but how the risk would weigh for you, you know, may be different from mine. It would depend on things like the community positive rate of uh, the area that you live in, uh, what kind of work you do, how much exposure you have with other people, how healthy you are, how healthy the people around you are. Um, and also, please don't deny your emotions either. Uh, I'm very well aware that I am making this decision in the late stage of my third healthy, spontaneous pregnancy. And I think I might have felt differently if I you know, this were to be my uh, first pregnancy after experiencing difficulties in conceiving or experiencing uh, a pregnancy loss. So, you know, it's okay to feel what you feel for whatever reason. Um, whatever conclusion you may come up with, listen to your gut, make sure you educate your gut with accurate information and uh, make sure that you're comfortable with what you decide. Women are too often put into situations where they need to make important decisions about their bodies and their families in isolation without necessary support and information that they need and somehow are too often uh, judged for the decisions they make no matter what they choose. Uh, please remember that there is no right answer here and there's no shame in what you choose either. I also signed myself up for a clinical surveillance study that tracks how pregnant women who decided to get the vaccine did over time. Uh, so I hope that those studies would provide us more definitive data in our new future. Well, that's it guys. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Uh, keep masking and hand washing and social distancing. Um, I look forward to talk to you again. Bye bye.